Greetings and welcome to a new video about square wave inverter. In this case, we will discuss a square wave inverter having a resistive load. We will see how we can calculate for this specific circuit the required parameters step by step and also verify this in MATLAB simulating simulations. Now, the inverter, square wave inverter is shown here. You see here the DC input that will be converted to an AC signal. That is the purpose of an inverter. We have here four switches, S1, S2, S3 and S4. The idea is that S1 and S2 are on and off at the same time and S3 and S4 are also on and off at the same time. So the VDC here, the DC voltage source is 100 volts, the resistor is 10 ohms and we have a switching frequency of 60 Hz. So these switches are switching with a switching frequency of 60 Hz. These are the questions. We have a lot of uh, questions to deal with. So we have an expression for the load current we need to determine. Also the RMS load current, RMS load voltage and the average source current, absorbed load power, THD for the load voltage and the THD for the load current. And THD stands for total harmonic distortion, which is an important parameter to re reflect the quality of our AC source, AC signal in the output. Okay, the waveforms, let's start with that one before we dive into the numbers and calculations. Now, this is the waveform for the load voltage. You see, actually, it is from the zero to T over two, which is the half of the period, is VDC, because when S1 and S2 are close, the VDC will be directly applied between these two nodes of the resistor from left to right. And when S1 and S2 are open and S3 and S4 are closed, then the still the current will be flown like, like so, but then in the reverse direction for the load. So then we have the minus VDC for the second half of the period. And it will repeat each other each, itself in the same form. The load current is that they have the same form, only the value will be of course divided by the resistor. So that will be then VDC over R for the maximum value and the minus VDC over R for the minimum value. The source current is always VDC over R for this case because it is always in the same direction so that doesn't change in the polarity like we have for the current of the load. Okay, let's now go to the calculations step by step. First the load current expression. As said we have now two parts VDC over R that is for the first half and minus VDC over R for the second half and if you now look at the values for the VDC in R that will be then plus 10 and minus 10 amps and these are the uh, time, time uh, domains actually for each region for the load current. Now, we, that is question A. Question B is about the RMS load current. This is the expression for the RMS value. This is a general formula. And now for specifically for the load current. Now, if we now substitute here also that we have two parts because from starting zero to T over two and then from T over two to T. So we need to have two separate parts and then substitute the values from here that is plus 10 and minus 10, that's shown in and then squared. And then using 0 to 1 over 120, because this is now the half of the period, and this is now from the half of the period to the full period. And this is now the period T, which is 1 over the frequency, which is then 1 over 1 over 60, which is then effectively 60 here. Now, if you calculate this, you get exactly 10 amps. Now, for arms load voltage, in a similar form, you can calculate it like so, you go in the similar form as we did for the RMS load current. Now it is a VDC or minus VDC, again looking from the graph, and we define it for the specific uh, parts of the period, and then substitute that in this uh, expression for 100 and minus 100, and you get actually here this value, and that will be then 100 volts. So that is question C. Question D is about the absorbed load power, then we can use this formula. Or you can also use the VO RMS squared over R, so it doesn't matter in this case. And now we know this IO RMS, that is 10 squared times the 10, so you actually get an effectively 1000 watt or 1 kilowatt. The next one is the average source current, which is this current here. And it must be, in this case, of course, 10 amps, but that can be also done using the power balance, because the power in must be equal to power out for ideal case, so if you don't have any dissipation elsewhere, then we know the power in is from the DC source, which is then DC voltage source times the average source current, which is also the DC value that's actually shown here, is equal to the absorbed power, which is the PO determined in question D. Now we now rewrite this as IS is equal to PO over VDC, 
that will be then 1000 over 100 is equal to 10 amps as we have expected. Okay, now collecting these four here, now go to the final two, which is our, we are the THTs, so total normal distortion. So total normal distortion for load voltage, and in general, the uh, total harmonic distortion is given by the RMS value minus the RMS value of the first harmonic divided by the uh, RMS value of the first harmonic, each squared, and then taking the squared in this format. Now we know the VO RMS, that's 100, but we don't know the VO1 RMS yet. So for the amplitudes of the harmonics of the load voltage are given for this square wave inverter by this formula, which is then V4 times VDC over N pi, and N here is the harmonic number. In this case, we have for NS1, because that is what we require, and we can calculate that because we also know what the VDC is, which is 100, so we have then 400 over pi, that is our amplitude of the first harmonic. Now we need to go to the RMS value, so we need to divide by the square root of 2, that will give you approximately 90.03 volts. Okay, now we now substitute that in here, we have now everything, we get now this expression, which is give you 0.483 or 48.3% as your THC for your load voltage. And in similar form for the load current, THT, again the similar formula, again we need the first harmonic, so let's go for the amplitude for the harmonic of load current, is given by this using Ohm's law because we know the expression for the harmonics for the load voltage, so we can use that in the formula of, of Ohm's law and divide that by resistor in this case, and that will give you this expression. And then for NS1 we have this, and that will give you now 400 over 10 pi, which is then 40 over pi amps. And then if you convert that to RMS, just divide by the square root of 2, will give you 9.003 amps. And this is of course not a surprise because you can also divide this by 10, you get exactly also this value. So this is just to show you that this is also possible in this way. Now we can calculate the THT for the load current in this form, just substitute the values in here, you get now also exactly 0.483 or 48.3% for our THT of the load current. Okay, let's now collect everything here and also look at the simulation result. This is now the circuit in the Simulink using Simscape elements. You see here the switches and S1, S2, but I also call this S2, so I actually call this S1 and S1, so they are actually on at the same time, and S2 and S2 here are also on at the same time. And this is now the waveform generator, PW, PWM. So if this is S1, that goes here, and the inverted version goes actually here and here. And this is the DC voltage source, and this is the resistor, and I measured also the source current, load current, and also the load voltage. And here you see the values, we have calculated. Let's go one by one. The first one is RMS load current, it's 10 amps. Now that's correct. You also see the RMS load voltage, 100 volts, so also as we have calculated. We see the average source current, it's 10 amps, also what we have calculated. We see that THD for the load voltage is 0.4834, so very close to what we have, maybe just to round them off errors. And the same is for the THD for the load current, so this is all nice and checked. Now let's also look at the waveforms. This is the waveform. You see here the first one is the source current. You see the red one is indeed 10 amps constant. You see here the green for the load current, IO. You see indeed that this is 10 and then minus 10 and then 10 actually as we have seen here for the load current. The final one is load voltage, which is the yellow one. And this is 100 or minus 100. For the first one is one, uh, for the first part of the period is 100 and the second part is minus 100. So again, as expected. Right, this was our example. First example, considering the simple square wave inverter having a resistive load. We will see in the next example more complicated loads. So I hope this clarifies the situation for this simple inverter discussion in more detail. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.